everyone. Welcome back to our virtual field trip here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Today's segment is called Do Sea Turtles Eat Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwiches? Now that's a great question. We might think, well of course, because some sea turtles eat jellyfish, right? But no, instead we're going to be learning about their diets today as well as our sustainable aquaponics exhibit. Uh, so my name is Caitlin. I work in our education department and here today we're going to have Jana joining us. We're actually going to go ahead and take it over to her inside our aquaponics exhibit so that way she can tell us a little bit about our system. Hi there. Welcome to our aquaponics area. My name is Jana. I'm part of the sea turtle team and also the aquaponics team. Now aquaponics itself is a mixture of aquaculture and hydroponics. Aquaculture is raising fish like, a, like the tilapia that you'll see here. Um, and hydroponics is growing plants without soil. So in this system, there is no soil. Um, we found other ways to grow it like water and some minerals. So we'll show you that. First, we're gonna feed the fish. But before that, a brief overview of aquaponics is that the, feed, the fish eat the food that we're gonna feed them, and then bacteria turn their poop into a form of fertilizer that the plants can use to grow. Once they take that from the water, the water is cleaner, and then the water actually goes to the lettuce to help fertilize those plants. The water is cleaner and then goes back to the fish. So it's a whole closed loop, which is really sustainable and good for growing the plants. Um, and it also helps us grow plants that we can feed to our green sea turtles here in the aquarium. So let's go on over and feed the fish and go from there. Now in this pool, we have about 49 tilapia. They're really good aquaponics fish because they can live in a lot of different conditions. As you can see, they're pretty big. Now, if you didn't know, blue tilapia is actually an invasive species in Florida. So again, these guys eat this, um, this food that we're feeding them, and then they'll poop out um, the excess and their poop is what is turned into plant fertilizer. So once they poop, the water actually goes to this bacteria um, container. So the water flows up this tube into this container where there are a lot of little bio balls. These bio balls actually house bacteria on them. So they're kind of like a little living space for the bacteria. And the bacteria, again, is what convert the fish poop into the fertilizer for the plants. So it comes out of this container and then goes into our growing stations. Over here, we have stackers and then tubes. And you can see there's a lot of plants growing. And the water comes through this system on a schedule. Um, with these guys, the water kind of sits there um, it helps those roots grow. And we have a couple different types of plants with us too. So right now we are growing some bok choy like this one, kind of a circular leaf. We also have romaine, which is more of a taller leaf. We've got some kale here. And up here we've got rainbow Swiss chard. It's really colorful. So those are the types of plants that we grow here. And again, in here is the water that gets flushed through. And those plant roots right there help take up the nutrients from the water. And over here, the water comes down this tube and then gets dispersed over the whole stacker. And then once it's done, the plants have taken up what they need. The water goes down through the floor and back to the fish. And that starts the whole cycle over again. So that's our aquaponics area. Um, again, it's a really sustainable way for us to grow things because sustainable means that it's able to reduce um, the runoff and pesticide use and there are no weeds. Um, and it's also really good at maintaining the resources because the only things that we need to add to the system are the fish food like we just did and new plants. You guys wanna come see some new plants? 
these guys are called seedlings and they're gonna go into the next stations once we grab and harvest um, older and more mature plants. So these are tiny little baby plants that'll eventually go over there. So that's our aquaponics area. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot and if you have any questions, let us know. Awesome, Jana. Thank you so much for taking us around our aquaponics exhibit. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, sustainability. So how our system is sustainable, as well as the steps that we've taken here at CMA uh, to make sure that we are sustainable as an organization as a whole. So our aquaponics exhibit, as Jana mentioned, uh, doesn't take up a lot of space. And you can see that behind me. You know, it takes up a small portion of our aquarium. So what that means is while we have a wide variety of species of leafy greens, so our plants, we're not taking up acres and acres of land by not utilizing that soil. Instead, we're using our tube and our stacker system to put a lot of plants in a very small space. Now, because we're not out there planting plants in a field, we're also not using um, different fertilizers that may have chemicals in them that can leach into our watershed. Now, we all live in a watershed, so even if you're not here along our coastline, we still want to make sure uh, that we are taking safe measures and using safe fertilizers instead. So we have, if you remember, our tilapia here in our fish pool that are creating waste as they eat, and that is used as fertilizer. So we're not putting anything into our environment, into our watershed that may then, of course, go out into uh, the ocean. And then another way we're able to remain sustainable within our aquaponics system is by utilizing recycled water. And that water is cleaned as it goes through the system, so it's never truly dirty water. Um, that's gonna go ahead and once it gets to the plants, as Jana mentioned, be recycled back into our fish, nice and clean and healthy for them. Now, a couple different ways that we remain sustainable here at CMA are by cutting out our usage of plastic. So if you'll, uh, when you do visit, or if you have visited in the past, you'll notice we don't have plastic cups. They may look like plastic as they are transparent, but they're actually made out of a compostable material. So even if it does end up in the landfill, it'll break down on its own or biodegrade over time. We do not have plastic water bottles. Instead, we have uh, bottles made out of boxes and then the cap, well, again, it looks plastic actually made out of that compostable material. We also have reduced our usage of plastic bags by completely eliminating them. So we have paper bags instead, as well as reusable tote bags, which I personally like to use to bring in all my groceries at one time because it makes for fewer trips. And then we have, in addition to all of those things out in our Shark Bites Cafe, we have uh, cutlery made out of bamboo. Again, something that's going to biodegrade or break down over time so we have less plastic out in our environment. But now that we've learned a little bit about our aquaponics system, we're going to go ahead and down to our kitchen where we prepare the meals for our sea turtles. All right, everyone. So before we get headed into our fish prep kitchen, uh, just a little overview of the preparation of our food. So in our kitchen, of course, we're going to be creating different things because we do house more than just sea turtles here at CMA. We also have animals like river otters who may be feeding on some yummy meatballs. I guarantee you guys these are a lot different than the ones that we may have at home. Um, of course, our sea turtles, we've been talking about them, uh, particularly the greens, getting leafy greens uh, like lettuce. And then of course, because we have those beautiful dolphins as well as other uh, species of sea turtles who are going to be getting those fish, we wanna make sure we have uh, fish as well as some squid and maybe even some shrimp for our animals. So let's go ahead into our kitchen to see how uh, everything kind of gets put together. So here in our kitchen, we keep bath mat so that way we're not tracking in any bacteria or anything um, from outside and then we do the same as we leave. Now here in our kitchen you can see a lot that you might find in your own kitchen at home. We have this nice big preparation table or counter. Uh, we have some 
clean dishes here, drying. Of course, we have our uh, cutlery all available, ready to go. So if we were at home, we were talking about, you know, do sea turtles eat PB&Js? What might you need to make a PB&J at home or any other sandwich? You would need maybe a plate. You would need a recipe that would tell you what ingredients you would need. And then you're going to need maybe a nice sharp knife, maybe a butter knife to spread that peanut butter and jelly, maybe a sharp one to cut your bread. Uh, so we're going to kind of talk about a little a few things that we may need. So of course the first thing we need is a recipe. So what ingredients are we going to be needing for our sea turtles? And that's where our diet board comes into play. So as you can see, every turtle is listed. Of course, our sea turtles may need things um, like vitamins or minerals that just like you and I would take on a daily basis. And then their diets. So we have here Bailey, for example, getting 600 grams of leafy greens, but then we're also going to give um, Bailey maybe some seafood. It looks like 100 grams of seafood for Bailey. So that might be things like squid or shrimp, like I mentioned earlier, or even maybe some capelin, and that's a type of fish. So now that we have our recipe, we'd have to get all of our ingredients. And just like at home, our ingredients live in a place where uh, we basically have our refrigerator here. However, I can guarantee you this refrigerator is a lot colder and a lot larger than the one that you have at home. So we're gonna have a variety of seafood ready to go, as well as all of our pulled uh, leafy greens. So when we have um, our greens in our aquaponics system, we're going to have to harvest them, of course, and then we're gonna wash them and then place them into bins. We have our washed and our unwashed greens. Everything, of course, is labeled specifically. You can even see on our shelves uh, the diets for some of our resident animals, like Winter and Hope. And even a place to put some of that not-so-good seafood. Sometimes our fish may come to us. Maybe it's missing an eye. Maybe some of its insides are out. We're not going to feed that to our animals because they all get restaurant quality fish. And we do a quality check here in the kitchen. And then one last final check before we feed it to them upstairs. So now that we have our refrigerator and our ingredients, um, if you take a look over kind of at our counter, we have some nice clean and drying uh, sort of plates, if you will. But of course our animals don't have your typical plates. Instead, they're gonna have something like maybe a, um, a big bucket or a small bucket. So after we feed our animals, of course, then we're gonna have a lot of dirty dishes, just like after we're done a meal. So the next step is to clean everything. Now, this entire kitchen floor to ceiling gets cleaned multiple times throughout the day. Um, so it's not just our dishes, it's the floor, it's the counters, it's inside the sink. Every inch of this is scrubbed throughout the day. Um, and in total, our cleaning process takes about 40 hours of manpower to clean that. And of course, that's gonna be divided up um, amongst several people throughout the day because there are only 24 hours in a day. But all together, it's quite a process. Awesome, so now that we better understand how we put our diets together for our animals, it's really important to note that not only do we hand feed our sea turtles, you know, we give it to, give their diets to them on a regular basis in that way, but we also introduce what we call variability into their environment. And so the way that we're able to sort of change things up and make it exciting for them is through the use of what we call EEDs or environmental enrichment devices. So something as simple as this black mat here with these holes in it, we can go ahead and use this, stuff it with different leafy greens, maybe some romaine lettuce or maybe some kale, and then offer it to our seed turtles that we have here at CMA. Now, we're gonna go ahead and head up to our aquaponics display and see how this is all put together with Miss Emma. In this video footage, we see Emma, one of our sea turtle and aquatic biologists, harvesting some yummy looking Swiss chard for one of our resident green sea turtles, Coco. 
Once the greens are harvested and cut down to size, we are able to stuff the mat and then carry it right over to Coco for a feeding session. Now, of course, this isn't Coco's entire diet, but it is a nice snack that we are able to offer him in an exciting way. This is one way we are able to add variability to their environment. Thinking about sandwiches that we may have for lunch, if they always look the same, it can become kind of boring. But if we cut the sandwich into different shapes and sizes, it can make lunchtime more fun. So right now, one of our sea turtle and aquatic biologists, Lauren, is in the water with Coco, feeding him this fun snack and then going to later be moving on to the rest of his uh, diet. A little bit about Coco and how he came to live here with us at CMA. Coco is an adult male green sea turtle who was found floating around Hamlover Canal in 1999 by a fisherman. He arrived at CMA the day after he was recovered by the Coast Guard. It was found that he had severe injuries to his head, which went through the top of his skull, through his left eye, and down through his maxilla, or jaw. He had several other wounds to include broken bones in his flippers. Remember from our anatomy segment that flippers are different than fins because they have bone structure, which mimics that which is found in the human hand. While Coco overcame many obstacles during his time in rehab, his head injury rendered him completely blind. Due to his severe injury, it was decided that Coco would not be released back into the wild as he would not survive without his eyesight, which of course would cause him to be unable to forage for food and invade predators like sharks. However, his other wounds did heal during his rehab process, and we are happy to say that he will be under our care for the rest of his life. Our staff, like Lauren here, work very hard every day to ensure that Coco and our other resident animals get the absolute best care we can possibly provide every single day. Thank you to our sea turtle and aquatic biologists, Lauren, Emma, and Jana for joining us today and letting us get a peek into what it takes to care for our wonderful residents in every in a very sustainable way. Thank you all so much for joining us during our virtual field trip here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. We hope you've enjoyed learning about what sea turtles eat and learning a little bit more about one of our resident turtles, Coco. Now, if you're interested, there are instructions for a fun activity that you can do at home in the link below. Thanks again for joining us, folks. We hope you have a fabulous rest of your day.